So while visiting Johannesburg, South Africa, which lately I've been doing once or twice a year, I decided to slide across the border to Habadoni, Botswana for the weekend, which is one of my favorite small towns. When I'm home in the US, I don't really party like that. But when I'm traveling around the world, I love to see how it goes down in other cities. So on this short trip, I'm going to be checking out the Habadoni Botswana nightlife and also see whatever else I can get into over the course of three days. Now I say Habadoni is a small town because it only has a population of 270,000 people. For comparison, I live in Houston, Texas, which has a population of 2.2 million people. See what I mean? But just because a city is small doesn't mean you can't explore and experience a good time, which I'm all for. So, the flight from Johannesburg to Habadoni was only one hour. So as soon as I landed, I was ready because again, I only had three days. It was early evening when I landed, so after I dropped off my bag at the hotel, I decided to go grab dinner at a restaurant a lot of people were telling me about, which was Ayoba Cafe. Now the food at this restaurant was just okay, but what I found out after I finished dinner is that around 8 or 9 p.m., this place transformed into one of the best night spots in town. This small lounge has great decor, a really good atmosphere, and the DJ plays a good mix of Afro beats and Emma piano. On top of that, the drinks are decently priced, between three and five dollars, depending on what you're getting. One thing I can say about the people in Botswana is that they for sure know how to have a good time. Now, something that really surprised me is that most of the bars in Habadoni close at about midnight, which I'm definitely not used to. But if you do want to party after midnight, you can go to one of the city's four nightclubs, which are Deja Vu, Rhapsody's Pekalani, Rhapsody Sabelli or Summit. If you know of any others, make sure you put them down in the comments section for people who might be visiting the city. The one I went to this night was called Deja Vu. To be honest though, I wasn't a fan of this club, but it was probably due to it being kind of dead because of the bad weather this night. However, the drinks were very affordable, the people were super cool, and the DJ kept the hits going all night. In this city, the clubs close around 2.30 a.m., which is kind of early compared to other cities I've partied in across Africa. Now the next morning, I wanted to get out and do something fun, so I decided to visit the Mokalodi Nature Reserve to see some animals. So when I first arrived to this private nature reserve, which was only a 20 minute drive from the city center, I first had lunch at the Mokalodi Kitchen, which is located right on the reserve. In my opinion, this is one of the coolest restaurants in Habaroni. The decor in this restaurant had a perfect theme that really matched the feel of the reserve. Everything from the wood and stones used throughout the restaurant, all the way to the selection of plants you see everywhere, gives this place a lot of charm. While you eat, they have wild impala and warthogs grazing next to you, which makes for an awesome experience. After I finished eating, I headed over to the actual nature reserve to start the safari. The Mokalodi Nature Reserve sits on 12 square miles of land, so it isn't that big. But it does have a lot of animals to see, ranging from giraffes to impala, hippos, and also the rhinoceros. The small safari gives you a small taste of Botswana's beautiful landscape and a little teaser of a few things you'll see if you make the journey to the north of the country to visit the city of Maun in the Great Okavango Delta. The SUVs they use at the Mokalodi Reserve comfortably seat up to 16 people, so it's cool to visit if you're traveling alone like I was or with friends or family. After leaving the reserve, I stopped by the Game City Mall to pick up an outfit to wear to a big event that was going on in the city. As you can imagine, Game City Mall was pretty small. However, they had just about everything you can want in a mall, minus the big name brands, which is typically out of my budget anyway, so it's all good. So the event that I attended was a Brutal Fruit campaign party, which was being held at the beautiful restaurant Park 27. This was a well put together event, and as you can see, there were beautiful women everywhere. Park 27 has really good food, and the host did a great job putting everything together. 
The DJ at this event was excellent and had the party going on throughout the late evening, especially once the drinks really started flowing. This particular event ended at around midnight, but people I met throughout the night here recommended that I check out the club Rhapsodies, located in the area of town called Sabelli. Rhapsody Sabelli definitely had a good vibe and everybody here was turned all the way up. A great place to end the night. My last day in Habaroni, I decided to stop by the Botswana National Museum. The museum displays some of the art, history, and culture of Botswana. It's not very big, but they have some great art pieces throughout the facility. And I also think they did a pretty decent job featuring many aspects of life in Botswana throughout the country's history. I also spent some time resting up in my hotel, which was the Hilton Garden Inn. I stayed in one of their suites, which was very comfortable and spacious. The Hilton also has a nice restaurant that typically has a very good breakfast buffet and also a good lunch menu. For dinner, a bunch of people suggested that I try the restaurant plus 267, and I could see why. They make a very good steak, have a variety of wines to choose from, and a really warm and comfortable space. After dinner, I decided to go to a local lounge called Corner Couch. Located alongside Acacia Mall, this spot was great for grabbing a drink, hanging out, and just meeting new people. One thing about all the people I met in Habaroni is that they are extremely fun and friendly. I met a gang of people who showed me around the city, taught me a lot about the community, and like all my past visits, ensured I had an amazing three-day stay in the city. Although Habaroni is a small town, it never disappoints especially if you're someone like me who enjoys that small town feel. It has a low cost of living, is very safe, and Americans don't need a visa to enter the country. This city is definitely high on my places to live because of all those reasons mentioned and also due to its close proximity to Johannesburg, South Africa, which is one of my favorite big cities in Africa. If you wanna take a look at some of my other videos in different cities throughout Southern Africa, you can check out the links on the screen or in the description box below. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.